Hi guys, I've been asked to give a quick mini lesson on learning objectives 1.2 and 1.3. This deals with calculating changes in position and momentum in three dimensions. I think the most common trouble I see with regard to these guys is iteratively updating position, momentum, and velocity. So let me just try to step back a second and let's look at the general process of updating anything. Um, it's really all the same. You just have to look at how does the new value depend on the old value and the change in the value. So take the dumbest thing you can think of, say your bank account balance. If you have uh, a bank account and you add money or take money out, you know after any step in the process, the new bank account balance is the old bank account balance plus the change in the bank account balance, right? So if you... Um, <clears throat> if you add money, delta B would be positive, and the old and the new balance will be larger than the old balance. If you take money out, delta B will be negative, and the new balance will be smaller than the old balance. That's really all there is to it. <clears throat> it's important to realize that when you're calculating positions and momenta, it's the same idea. It's just that now these things are vectors. So the new position is a vector. It's the old position as a vector plus the change in the position as a vector, right? And the same way with velocity, the new velocity is going to be the old velocity plus the change in velocity. That's not too bad. And, of course, the new momentum, if we're doing a physics problem with the forces and th so on, that's just some, going to be the old momentum plus the change in the momentum. Now, the change in momentum, of course, is given by the momentum principle. This is a vector. The change in momentum is the net force acting times the change in time. The change in velocity is the change in momentum divided by the mass, right? Assuming we're at non-relativistic speeds, of course. And the change in position is simply uh, the average velocity times the change in time. And I want to point out that in practice there are many cases when the change in time is small, the velocity is not changing very quickly, that we use the final velocity instead of the average velocity because the velocity is almost constant and it doesn't really uh, significantly change the answer. So as a convenience, as a sort of a shortcut, we will sometimes do that. Okay. Let's do a simple example. Suppose we have a rock flying through the air with some initial velocity. Let's go ahead and give it a mass, 2 kilograms. Give it an initial velocity vector. Let's just say it's uh, 2, 3 meters per second. Okay, And uh, let's just ask some questions about what happens. So first of all, let's calculate its initial momentum. Its initial momentum is going to be the mass times the velocity. So that's uh, 4, 6, 0. And that's going to have units of kilogram meters per second, right? And let's suppose we watch it for just a short period of time, a hundredth of a second. So let's have d delta t is going to be 0.01 seconds. Just a very brief moment. And ask what's its new momentum, what's its new velocity, and how far has it moved in the intervening time? The general principle is the new momentum is the old momentum plus the change in momentum. The new velocity, oopsie, is the old velocity plus the change in velocity. And the new position is the old position plus the change in the position. And all we have to do is calculate these three changes, boom, 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 and we'll be able to answer all these questions. So, first, the change in momentum. In order to get the change in momentum, we need to know the net force acting. This is a rock in free fall, so the only force is going to be the weight of the rock, that is the earth acting on the rock, right? And that's going to be just uh, m times the g vector, where g is the gravitational field strength near the surface of the Earth, which, of course, is approximately 10 newtons per kilogram 
pointing down. It's 9.8 something, but we'll call it 10 just because it makes the numbers easier. So um, let's say the weight vector as a vector is going to be mg. And that's going to be 2 kilograms times 0, negative 10, 0 newtons per kilogram. And that's going to be 0, negative 20, 0 newtons. That'll be the weight vector. That's the only force acting on the thing. So what that means is... Um, we get the change in momentum quite easily. The change in momentum is the net force, the weight vector, times the change in time. Now, the change in time is a hundredth of a second, so this is going to be 0, negative 20, 0 newtons, times 0 0.01 seconds. And that works out to be 0 0.01 times 20 is 0 0.2. So that'll be 0, minus 0 0.2, 0 newton seconds. Okay, lovely. So what's the new momentum going to be? The new momentum is the old momentum plus the change in the momentum. And of course, the, um, let's see, let's get these out of the way. Get this stuff moved up here. <coughs> the old momentum we decided was 4, 6, 0 newton seconds, and we're going to add to that 0 minus 0 0.20 newton seconds. And how does that work out? Well, we just take off 0.2 newton seconds from the 6. The 4 stays the same. So it's going to be 5.80 newton seconds. Boom. That's so that's our new momentum. All right, let's move on. Now that we've got the new momentum, let's work out the new velocity. Actually, you could do it two different ways. You could say the new velocity is the old velocity plus the change in velocity. Of course, the change in velocity, delta v, is going to be nothing other than the change in momentum divided by the mass. But it's also true that the old velocity is the old momentum divided by the mass, and the new velocity is the new momentum divided by the mass. So at shortcut, since I've got the new momentum here, I've already got it worked out, I could just say the new velocity is the new momentum divided by the mass. So I can simply take this new momentum, five, 4, 5.8, and 0, and divide it by the mass, 2, and I'd get 2, comma, and then instead of 5.8, I guess that's going to be um, 2.9, 0. And that's going to be meters per second. So essentially what happened was the momentum dropped by 2 tenths of a kilogram meter per second. The velocity dropped by 1 tenth of a meter per second. Now that velo the original velocity was 3. The new velocity is 2.9, so the velocity isn't changing very much, so it's okay if you want to use the final velocity to calculate the change in position. So I would say the change in position is going to be equal to, let's hang on, oh, hang on, the change in position is going to be equal to uh, v nu times delta t. So that's going to be 2 comma 2.9 comma 0 meters per second times 0.01 seconds which is going to be 0 0.02, 0 0.029, meters. In other words, it's going to go to the right about 2 centimeters and up just a tick less than 3 centimeters. Okay, so what's the new position going to be? Let's figure that out. Uh, let's move some of these guys up a little bit. <coughs> Our new is going to be our old plus delta r. Well, we never had an r old. Let's say r old is actually the origin. Or maybe, uh, actually, let's make it something other than the origin. Let's say r old is uh, 0, 
one zero meters. So it started a meter above the floor. Um, the floor would be the y coordinate origin, and it started just above the x coordinate origin. And so what you're going to get is plus point zero two point zero two nine zero meters. And if I add those together, I'm going to get point zero two and then 1.0290 meters. In other words, it's going up very slightly. It moved to the right very slightly. But the main point is the old position plus the change in position is the new position. That's the thing we're trying to check to make sure you understand. Okay, that's all there is.